Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden project. So as you know, the uh, July and August heat has just decimated 90% of the pretty flowers, which means it's time for fall plants. And my garden center, AKA Walmart, finally got mums that I can afford because the actual garden center's beautiful mums are expensive. So I found a few of these $5 mums and they're just really pretty like light purpley pink kind of color. And then I found two larger mums that are supposed to be the same pink ones we planted up front last year. They're looking more purple to me, but we'll see. I like purple too. Either way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plant these guys up. If you watched my uh, video where we cut these back, they still had white blooms. These were super tunias. Um, they're not coming back. They're dead sticks. So we're going to replace them with mums for fall. My best friend Rachel is here to help. Hey guys. She has been coerced and to filming. So we're going to go ahead and start with these. We'll take the... Uh, egg crates off. We'll take the dead plants out, pop in the mums. I've got some new soil here. We're not going to fill up the whole container. We'll just, you know, pack the new plants in with as much dirt as we need. I typically refill these containers once a year in the spring, and then I don't, I don't feel the need to replace them with completely new potting soil every season. The mums will really only be in here blooming for a month or two, so they don't need all new nutrients, but let's go ahead and get this done because we have very important things to watch on television. Yes. Um, do you want to grab that empty green can on the porch? Because I meant to grab it and I forgot. It was from the knockout roses that mom got me for my birthday. And so I always keep the nice big containers like when I can, you know. See, this still looks dark. It looks good. And this is, we did all the drip. So Rachel bought some raised beds kind of like mine for her backyard. And she's been talking about putting in a drip system in her garden because it's obviously far superior to hand watering everything. So this is what I have for my pots and you can see it has just one, two, three drip emitters. So the mums will get water all season. It's such a game changer because then you just have to come out and like walk around and check that everything's okay a couple times a week as opposed to if you miss a day, everything's just dead. All right, you have gloves, so why don't you like make a hole there? I normally just get dirty, but this works better. I think so, don't you? You just kind of want it even with the surface of the pot. And this spot is full sun almost 100% of the time. So this water runs twice a day in the early morning before it gets hot and in the evening um, around five. So they will uh, get lots of good water. And hopefully They will do really well in our zone. We're 8B down here. Do you know what zone you are? Rachel lives in Texas, so very similar climate. I think 8A. I think 8A. Like 90% of the time when we talk, our gardens are very, very similar. Um, you can grow a few more things than I can. Yeah. We get a more, way more humidity, and so we can grow more tropical things than she can. Yeah. We have a lot more cacti. Is yeah. that the right term? Yeah. <laughs> Desert heat versus um, island heat. You're definitely more like a desert. So, but what I was saying is, 
in our zones, a lot of the times when these mums are done blooming in this pot, I can take them out, plant them in the landscape, and they will come back for us. Not all mums come back consistently, but I would say about half of the mums I've transplanted have come back. It's pretty good. This is the hardest part. Definitely easier with two people. Should have seen me trying to do it last year because I put. big white mums in these last year. They were beautiful. I was wondering how you did this. But it was hard. So it works for mums in the fall, but this is why I like to plant the supertunias in them because you plant one plant, they get huge and they grow through the egg crate as opposed to trying to like contain it all in the egg crate. But there you go, one mum. I think they look cute. And that's the not as good mom. This one's better. This one's really nice. So we're gonna put the full one at the front. Let's say there's a weed. When in doubt, there's a weed everywhere. I the two mums that I planted here last year, I didn't take out until like um spring when I was planning my spring stuff. I have to show you the video because that mum, it was a white one and it had rooted all the way down. Like the roots were like this long. Oh, it that was, thing goes all the way down? It was insane. Oh. I had a, quite a bit of roots in here. Yeah, it's hollow all the way down, so it has a pretty big dirt reservoir, which is very nice for plants. That's why I don't fill them up every season. Is that the good side facing front? I need to check on that one. I don't think the good side is quite as facing front on that one. I think this side's better. Little then. Like that. Oh no, it's just a dead part from another mum. I bet that'll fluff back up in time. Always turn that one a smidge if we need to, like the whole pot. But just wilty. water because that one was definitely struggling at Walmart. One day I will be able to go to the garden center and buy beautiful mums. Until then, they're still pretty. What do you think? Is that good? This one's definitely going to be harder. <laughs> Gather them up like a ponytail. Yeah, that's way better. Do it that way. <laughs> All right, give me two seconds. I'm gonna go get the finishing touches.
So too. We'll do that later. All right. So we go up and plant the other two, which are much bigger. And um, Rachel didn't know what we were using the power drill for. So let's go show her how we plant things in Alabama. You might need one of these. You really do. <laughs> I got one for mom for Christmas. She loves it. All right, y'all. So here's one of the two big ones. They're supposed to be pink. They look very purple, but we'll see. Last year when I bought these, they were the same plots, the same tags. They were definitely pink, but I bought them on clearance last year. They were all fully bloomed and had been bloomed for a week or two. So I am hoping that they come out a darker purple and fade to pink. But if not, I still like purple. It's fine. We're just going to say it's fine. Okay. Okay. It's not fine. We want pink. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this guy right here. And this is how you use the drill. I'm gonna pull back my compost a bit, even though it's the end of the season and the compost has composted. Now we're gonna dig a hole. here with the trees so that always means you have to go a little slower maybe than in an area without roots you can really just get right in there but still much faster than digging with hand shovel yeah. it's all up too. it does You know, I have bad arthritis in my wrist, so this makes a huge difference in how much I can dig. I really want, they make them in all different sizes. So they have them with long handles that you can use from up here. I want one of those so you don't have to bend over. They make them huge, like for even like a gallon size pot, but I don't know if I use that as often. I mainly want the one that's this size on the long handle, especially for things like planting tulip bulbs. You can just drill straight down, pop in a bulb, and move on. I wonder if that would work for our soil. It'd be interesting to try. Do you have hard soil? Yeah, it's really hard. It's like clay. Probably. So I follow one girl, Janie, who has really hard soil in her backyard, not in her front yard, mm. and she uses wood. Oh. Um, she said sometimes in the hard, hard, really hard places, she goes and like wets them down first. I think they would need to. The main hard part is it gets caught in the roots. We have a bunch of rocks. I wonder how they do it for that. They do okay as long as they're not huge rocks. Of course, the bigger the rock, the more they bling or hit. But they're not expensive. I expected them to be really expensive. They were like 20 bucks for a set of two. So I would think you would want, you could try it and see what you thought. All right, let's see if this is big enough. This is a pretty big root ball, which is the pretty side. That. Like 
like this. So actually, they're kind of pointing the other way though. Okay, so like that. Do moms follow the sun? I don't know. I think I most noticed. plants do. Really is. That's how you plant them on in the ground. Although you really should have some fertilizer, and I didn't. Somehow I'm a hot mess and Rachel looks fine. So I think this is very unfair and she owes me more labor. <laughs> but the mums are in and the pumpkins are in. I do think we're gonna try to find another one, maybe a white one. I think we need to. At least one more. Things always look better in odd numbers. Yeah, So. Pretty's best. Yeah, but the mums are in. And what do you think of the auger? Yeah. She said she has harder soil than we do, so it'll be interesting to see if she does get one, how it works for her. But I always like them. They save my wrists a lot. So yeah. I am a fan for anything that is on the work smarter, not harder train of thought. But for now, we're going to go inside and uh, work on some tablescapes. So if you want to see more Rachel, come check us out there. Bye. Bye.